in the last exercise from the topic one workshop, we're going to be looking at determining the uh, amount of cash that is going to be reported uh, on the balance sheet. Uh, we have a number of different items uh, that this company has, and we have to determine whether they should be uh, included in the balance of cash and cash equivalents. Before we begin, let's get a definition of what a cash equivalent is. We're going to look for a definition in the FASB codification. If you haven't used the codification before, there is a separate video that explains how to access it. The uh, user uh, account name and the password uh, for Flagler is on the class's portal page under administrative items. Once you have logged on through the American Accounting Association's website, following the directions on the document on the portal, you will come to this home page for the codification. Now there's a number of different ways that we can look for the definition of cash equivalents. Since we're looking for a definition, the quickest way would be to go to the glossary. So we're going to go down here to the various different topics and the last item is the glossary. This gives definitions of terms used in the codification. So we're looking for cash equivalents. We have an alphabetic group alphabetically. So we'll click on the C. And we will scroll down until we find cash equivalents, and here it is. This tells us that cash equivalents are short-term, highly liquid investments. But we know the amount of cash that we will be receiving, and they are so near to their maturity that there is little risk that we will not receive the full amount of the interest, regardless of whether there is a change in interest rates. It goes on further to say that only investments with original maturities of three months or less qualify. So a three-month T-bill qualifies as a cash equivalent. A three-year T-bill that was purchased only three months from maturity also qualifies. However, if we had held a T-bill that was for three years, it does not become a cash equivalent when it has only three months remaining. So it's the original maturity date and the date that it was purchased that it governs whether we can classify it as a cash equivalent. If we wanted to, we could cut, copy and paste this, into a document to act as our authoritative criteria in our work paper. In addition to using the glossary, we could have searched cash equivalents using the search feature. Cash equivalents. We get a number of different hits from our search. So let's start with our first one. We can click on the topic. We see that we don't get a definition right off of cash equivalents. However, notice that the cash equivalents is bolded and there's a dashed underline. 
That means we can get a definition by clicking on it. By clicking on it, it will bring us over to a glossary. We get the definition that way. The third way of searching for our definition would be to go through our topic. Since we're dealing with cash, we know that's an asset, so we'll highlight the asset category. And we see that there is a topic that covers cash and cash equivalents. We want to look at the overall section. We're not looking at specific industries. So click on overall. And we see that we have a number of different choices, places to go. And one of the things they give us is the glossary of terms. Again, if we click on that, it will bring us to our definition of cash equivalents. Well, now we have our definition, we can work on our problem. Now we have a number of items. Our task is to determine whether these are current assets, which will be in the cash and cash equivalents accounts on the balance sheet, whether we have a current asset that will be carried as an investment or a non-current asset investment. Well, our first item is a checking account at First National Bank, and that's going to be classified as cash. A savings account, likewise, will also be cash. We have undeposited customer checks. They'll be classified as cash. Coins and currency. Next, we have a savings account that we are told the company is holding. for plant expansion in future years. Well, since it is our intent to hold this, it is not going to be classified as a current asset since we don't expect to spend it for another two years. So we have a non-current investment. We have an additional $20,000 in a checking account that represents an agreement known as a compensating balance. This loan which is the basis of this compensating balance, is not due until 2016. So we will not have access to that money for the long term. So that also will be a non-current asset. Next we have two key bills, one that has a two-month maturity and one that has a seven-month maturity. Well, the two-month maturity meets the definition of a cash equivalent. However, the seven-month maturity, while being a current asset, will be classified as an investment and not cash. So next we're going to take the total of all of the accounts we classified as cash and cash equivalents. We're going to add them all up. So now only the cash accounts and cash equivalents are going to be included in our formula and the amount of cash that we report on the balance sheet is 56380 